see it smoking? See that? Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey friends, Shane from Unwrench.com, and I'm going to show you something in this video. I'm um, doing some maintenance on a bunch of the bikes here at the shop, and on this uh, chopper, the battery's a little low, and this has a 145-inch motor with automatic decompressioners, but it's really important that the battery build do the job. But as I was trying to fire it up, I had it on charger for a bit, still wasn't quite enough to, to go, but I noticed something that's a huge problem on choppers especially because of all the vibration, but in particular, uh, in particular choppers because of all the vibration, but this can happen to any battery and that's loose battery connections. And before I fix it, I'm going to show you what's wrong and what's going on with this. So stay tuned. Okay, okay so check this out here. I can actually move this cable. So it's loose, okay? Ooh, I have a wire. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I wonder what that little bugger goes to. That, look at that. It is, I didn't even notice that at first. So that that sucks, that needs fixed. It's, it's going something, look at one strand. Can you see that? There's one strand, that's terrible. I'm gonna get one more tool, I'm gonna get a temp gun. Cause when I crank this over, you're gonna actually see the smoke because it's trying so hard to push that amperage. This battery has probably around 300 cold cranking amps. It's trying to push it through these little tiny fittings, especially on that one strand there. And it's actually gonna get so hot it's gonna smoke. And, and when it started to smoke, because as I was cranking it over, I know to look at things, I noticed right away that that was loose. I'm gonna get a temp gun to actually show you how hot this gets as well as letting you see it smoke. Then we're gonna tighten it up and show you that it won't. So see what we're dealing with. It's been sitting out here with the sun on its back here. Well, and I tried starting it, so we'll see what we come up with. I'm showing anywhere from 99 to 100 degrees right now. Now let me go ahead, get close. I want you to get close with the camera and see if we can capture it literally starting to smoke. Get my legs out of the way, just in case it does start, which would be awesome. Let's see, flip the fuel on. Okay. Here we go. Now it's starting. See it smoking? See that? Okay. <clears throat> so there was obviously enough in there to get it to burp and get it to go, but that smoking is bad. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and crank this down. Oh, that was pretty significantly loose. Oh, and look at jumped up 55 degrees with that amperage going through there just from cranking on it. So it is smoking hot. The other one that wasn't loose, look, it's 113. And that one I, I glanced at real quick when I was first doing it, and it was like 110. So it went up three degrees being tight, and it went crazy hot being, uh, geez. And it takes a while to cool down. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Now you're, you, you might be wondering, well, how tight do I get them? Like, you know, what should I do? There are torque specs, and these are solid terminal where people really get into trouble is that they look up a torque spec one time, they go, oh, that must be all batteries. Well, when this is a solid lead fitting, it has a little bit higher torque spec, but if you're hollow and pulling a nut up through, especially a really cheap battery, this is a good one, um, it's, it's just going to be uh, a lower spec, and what most people find, I hate to say this, I want to be transparent, it's, it's about feel, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that where I feel what it's, you know, that's tight. And the next thing you do, try to wiggle the cable. Like if I can rotate that cable, I got a problem. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is I'm noticing I'm not happy with this design that there's no strap. So that's something that needs fixed. Can you see that? So as you're riding down the road, what is this doing? It's sitting there and banging back and forth. And every time that moves back and forth, it's going to loosen this cable. Matter of fact, here's a good story to tell is that, uh, Harley Davidson, when they came out with, I think it was the 06 Dyna, where it was the new style uh, clutch spline, it was the new twin cam. They had a recall where the way the wire routing was going back to the bracket for like the, I think it was the ECM and the tip over sensor and things like that. They had the routing coming at an angle that the way that that engine vibrated, it was working the cables loose. And so the quick fix 
uh, and then over time what was happening is the bracket with, from all that vibration was uh, made a little too thin. It was breaking off and as soon as that tip over sensor broke off, the bike was completely dead. I mean, you lost everything. So one of the quick fixes was that they sent the dealers along, to my understanding, uh, so we can correct me if I'm wrong about this, I'm, I'm pretty dang sure, but what the deal was they sent a much longer battery cable and rerouted it from a different way so that as it vibrated, because you can't stop the vibration. I mean, a Harley, especially a rubber mounted dyna like that, sitting there, you know, shaking away, that vibration isn't gonna go. But what happened by changing the routing of the cable is the cable just sat and moved with it instead of like against it, causing it to come loose, right? So all you guys out there building choppers, that's something you're not thinking about. Like you're going, well, should I come from the back? Is it vibrating this way or is it vibrating this way? I'm gonna tell you this, if it's a chopper, it's just vibrating everywhere, <laughs> you know, out of all honesty. So uh, one thing that's really important is battery maintenance and coming in here and taking a good look at, you know, what are we working with and then get straps on there and get it fixed or shove rubber padding in there so tight with the whole thing down that it, oh geez, look at that. Yeah, okay. I've been bragging about this bike and now I found the first thing I don't care for on it. Let's see what happens now with this tight. We'll zoom back in. Okay, we're gonna just try and see what happens here. I hate to say it, but hopefully it won't start. <laughs> Okay. All right. Look at that. I cranked on that thing and it doesn't smoke anymore. Now let's check this too. That battery got a big workout. It just hasn't had time to cool down. I'm getting about the same temperatures as I was before, but it didn't increase. And we obviously saw that the smoke wasn't in there. So this is uh, a repair for that. Now. I need to find out what this wire goes to. That's pretty crazy how bad it is. And it looks like it's been chafed. But let me let me add one more tip that'll wrap this video up, okay? And that is, make sure my key's off here, is that when you see a problem like this, especially in this whole chopper world, one of the first things you need to do is go grab the seat and see if the seat, how it mounts on here, see if it's pinching this. Or maybe, like I could see, come a little closer. You see this wire? is laying across this piece of tubing right here that the frame so maybe what was happening is every time the seat was coming on here it was pushing on that and that was causing that that fatigue to break over time uh so you know maybe the seat needs to be relieved and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab the seat you can see a little wear rub there we know it hooks under here and sits back here so we're gonna see if our seat is an issue and maybe this all just needs tucked in here with a little more intention anytime you're ever in here let me grab the seat all right, got the seat. I'm looking in these areas in here and I got two pretty big pieces of evidence right away. Come here. What do we see right there and there? We see the indentations of the battery terminals that are rubbing on there, okay? Now, you know, part of this is it's gonna hold it down, right? And there's no metal in here that's gonna cause any you know, potential grounding issues. But I'd rather not see this digging in and thinking that, you know, what's that look like? Is that going to cause a problem? The other thing you can see real clearly is this pretty uh, stern support, if you will. I don't know if this is a fiberglass base or metal. wouldn't know without taking part. And it's too hard to tell. But as that rests on there, that wire is just sits naturally right there. And you can see it would have been real easy to keep pinching it over time. And so you would need to know on your bike, keep this pathway clear. And if you look at a lot of like Japanese motorcycles, you'll see where there's cutouts or there's little rubber pads, like the seat might have rubber pads that sit down in there. You wanna make sure and check all that. So basically in summary, battery maintenance and wiring back here, it's really crucial to consider your seat is an area that you need to be inspecting and see what the design is. It doesn't matter if it's one of those Japanese motorcycles, you know, out there. They all have like rubber padding and supports of where the seats go. Make sure and see what you're dealing with. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. I hope it showed you something about the importance of uh, uh, electrical integrity. And the other thing we're going to do, we're going to charge this up. And I bet a bunch of you want to hear this 145 inch motor fire up and run. So here it is. All right, want to hear this run? Hope our battery's charged up enough now.
pretty big. Blah, 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 bl